Now at 8.30 on WKYT this morning, we're tracking a murder for hire investigation in Dallas, Texas, involving a former UK student, the latest on the woman police say paid to have her killed. The Eastern Kentucky University community came together to pay their respects to an EKU lineman who died a week ago today. We'll hear from friends and teammates about how they'll remember him. And Kentucky's most famous boxer will be on the cover of Sports Illustrated for a record 39th time when the magazine hits newsstands tomorrow. That story and more on WKYT This Morning. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Happy Sunday to you. I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And I'm Sean Moody. Thanks for joining us on what's a much better start to the day than yesterday was. Yes, so the weather is beautiful and we're football heavy today. We have UK highlights plus the NFL follows us this morning. Yeah, from England. Should be a little bit different. Not sure if the football weather is good <laughs> there as it is here. Let's check in with Mike Linden right now. Looks great here. Well, Sean, it's safe to say that Mother Nature, oh, we got a nice little bird enjoying the weather there. It's safe to say Mother Nature is calling an audible on our weather for this weekend because it's been wet and chilly. Can't say the same right now. Things are looking a lot better as the skies begin to clear out a little bit. Not really seeing very much rainfall either here on First Alert Defender. But what we are finding are those temperatures that right now are in the mid 50s, which, by the way, is where we ended up yesterday afternoon. So we are already on pace to get back into the mid to high 60s. And things are looking pretty good as we move forward here. Much warmer now than where we were yesterday. And the sky's the limit, really. I'll show you how warm we'll go coming up in about 10 minutes. Thanks, Mike. Police in Dallas, Texas are still trying to piece together the details and what they're calling a murder for hire case involving a former UK student. Yesterday, Dallas police arrested the suspected gunman. Now the hunt is on for the woman who they believe hired him. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is at the live desk now with what we're learning about the case. Good morning, Hillary. Good morning, Sean and Michelle. Dr. Kendra Hatcher, who worked as a pediatric dentist in Dallas, Texas, was shot and killed on September 2nd. As you mentioned, police have now made a second arrest in the case. Dallas police arrested Christopher Love, who is facing a capital murder charge after officers say he was identified as the person who shot the former UK dental student in the parking garage of her apartment complex. Investigators say he was in possession of what they believe to be the murder weapon when he was arrested. Now, weeks earlier, officers arrested 23 year old Crystal Cortez. They say she was Love's getaway driver. Also, police say there is a third woman involved, 33 year old Brenda Delgado, who they say paid Love to kill Hatcher. Investigators say the alleged getaway driver Cortez admitted being hired by Delgado to rob Hatcher, and Love also admitted his role in the robbery, which led to Hatcher's death. An arrest warrant for a capital murder charge has been issued for that third woman believed to be involved, Brenda Delgado, who police say planned this whole thing. Now, at this point, investigators have not released a possible motive. At the live desk, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Hillary, thank you. It's been a tough week for EKU's football team. Players, coaches, and fans have all been mourning the loss of one of their teammates. 19 year old Joey Kramer died in a crash last week in Madison County. He was honored last night during the EKU Kentucky game. And WKYT's Garrett Weimer shows us how both teams remembered him. 23 miles separate the football fields of these two Kentucky foes. But at Commonwealth Stadium Saturday night, the in-state rivals stood together to honor a fallen EKU teammate. Joey Kramer had been a colonel only since August, but after his death on Sunday, his fellow players took the field against Kentucky with Kramer's initials not far from their heavy hearts. It's just, it's just a tragic thing, man. Before the game, EKU fans tailgated and had a good time. Go! But the loss of a young defensive lineman, just 19 years old, still wasn't far from their minds. It's unfortunate that a young man like that should pass, but hopefully some good will come out of it. EKU fans told me the tributes go to show what's most important, not just on game day, but every day. You know, we're different teams, but then again, we're all on the same team. I mean, it's just very sad and tragic that, you know, someone that young can lose their life. But it's going to show there's bigger things in football other than this game. There's a lot of things, you know, stories leading up to this game. But 
just a lot of bigger things than football right now. A reminder that there's more that unites us than what divides us, especially when it's only a couple dozen miles. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Now, in addition to honoring Kramer, EKU football players also wore gold shoelaces last night to help raise awareness of childhood cancer. WKYT has learned the names of two people killed Friday in Bath County. Kentucky State Police say 64 year old William K was driving west on U.S. 60 near the Bath Montgomery County line Friday afternoon when he went off the road and hit a fence. We're told he died at the scene, and one of Key's passengers, 64 year old Diana Day, went to UK Hospital where she later died. Another passenger was unharmed. A Lexington prison employee is accused of taking thousands of dollars in bribes to smuggle tobacco to inmates. A grand jury has indicted Michael Harden for taking bribes and supplying contraband to inmates between July 2014 and August 2015. The indictment says Harden made more than $22,000. The bribery charge carries a maximum sentence of 15 years. Search crews in Louisiana say they plan to return to Kentucky soon to continue searching for a man who went missing more than three years ago. Clarence Holmes disappeared on Laurel Lake back in July 2012. Police say he was helping other boaters during a storm. Mark Michaud, who has been leading the search for Holmes, says recovery teams are close to completing their search and recovery mission. A hiker who was pulled out of the woods by Powell County search and rescue members got to meet the team for the first time since being rescued. Back in August, 16 year old Philip Bledsoe fell about 20 feet from a cliff at Pilot Knob. Yesterday, Bledsoe got to meet the rescuers who got him out. Those rescue crews were from Powell, Wolf, and Estill counties. They all participated in that rescue, and they had to battle the elements, the darkness, and even venomous snakes to get the team out. New this morning, police in London are investigating after they say someone shot into a business. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office says someone shot at the Southern Bell Dairy Office Friday night. Deputies say the bullet shattered the front and back glass doors, causing over $1,000 worth of damage. Deputies are asking anyone with information to give them a call. We are now less than a month away from Kentucky's November general election. Yesterday, Kentucky's candidates for governor met at Kentucky State University in Frankfort to debate the issues affecting the Commonwealth. The event was called Operation Turnout. On October 25th, WKYT will broadcast the debate between the candidates. Eastern Kentucky University and the League of Women Voters are sponsoring that debate. The Republican nominee for governor, Matt Bevin, held a rally in Frankfurt before that forum. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul was among the politicians who went to that rally in a show of support. Now, this comes after Matt Bevin said he would not vote for Rand Paul in his 2016 presidential bid. Instead, Bevin said he would vote for neurosurgeon Ben Carson. It's a race that won't be on the November ballot, but Kentucky's first congressional district in the western part of the state is still going to be a hot one. Congressman Whitney Westerfield announced earlier this week he would not seek a 12th term. Democratic State Senator Dorsey Ridley from Henderson says he's planning on running for the seat. Kentucky Agriculture Commissioner James Comer says he's now considering running. Westerfield's aide Michael Papp is also entering the race. And they call him the greatest. One of Kentucky's best athletes and greatest boxer will be given a huge honor when his 39th Sports Illustrated cover hits newsstands tomorrow. Muhammad Ali will be on the cover of this week's Sports Illustrated. It's 50 years after it was snapped. This iconic 1965 picture of Ali will grace tomorrow's cover. Sports Illustrated is also set to rename their Legacy Award after Muhammad Ali. If you say Muhammad Ali, people automatically know who he is and what he stands for and what he represents and his importance in the world. Ali was honored Thursday during a gala, gala in Louisville. This week marked the 40th anniversary of Ali's final win against Joe Frazier, one of the most important fights of his career. Cool to see him honored 50 years later after that picture. It is pretty cool. It's 840 coming up on WKYT this morning. Forget Christmas. Forget Thanksgiving. Today is quite possibly the best holiday of the year. The details on National Taco Day coming up. And get ready for things to get better in a hurry. After this wet and chilly start to our weekend, across Kentucky, things are already looking up. 
I'll show you what you can expect for Sunday and for the week ahead coming up.